Hello, uh, my name is Chad, and I'm a pastor here at Koinonia Church. And I just want to welcome you guys to week one of our REACH series that's called Getting Back to the Main Thing. Um, I just want to take the next five, ten minutes and encourage you guys and help you focus in a little bit more. And I want to encourage you in this uh, theme of being aware. Um, I want you, uh, my hope is that you would be aware of where you are, aware of, of course, your surroundings, but mostly be aware of what God is doing. Um, I want to share a quick story. About a year and a half ago, maybe two years, there was actually a, a really crazy thing that happened downtown Hanford. It happened right next door to our offices downtown. Um, but there was a, disgrunt, a disgruntled employee um, of the, the company next door to us that actually took his truck, ran it into the front of the building, and as he ran it into the front of the building, he took out um, a gun and he began to shoot into the area. Um, and this was a crazy scene, and when I think back to it now, I think of, man, what a crazy scene. Uh, just it seems like it popped out of a movie. Well, in the middle of that, thankfully nobody was hurt, but unfortunately the person that began shooting took his own life. Um, so nobody got hurt outside of him, um, but sadly he took his own life. Um, and as I begin to kind of think about that scene, I, I begin to think about a, a, a couple more incidences that have happened throughout the time of our offices downtown. We've had things like someone coming into the back door, busting in, and then threatening us in the middle of a staff meeting. Um, we've had, of course, break-ins, and there's um, all kinds of things that kind of happen, not to mention some of the weird activity that's happening in the back alleys with some of the homeless people that live in those back alleys. But after, uh, after these few incidences happened, actually a couple came to us from the church that uh, they actually help us uh, oversee the security team here um, at, at Koinonia. And they are trained in, of course, safety and helping people and training people actually in kind of hostile situations. Uh, so they, just, they, they said, hey, could we come in and sit down with your staff and really kind of just have a talk with you guys? And so they came in, which we're super thankful for. And at the time, to be honest, when I heard about the training that we were about to have, um, I said, I, I didn't think I needed something like that. Like, who would want to mess with this, right? Um, um, but ultimately, as they began to teach us, I quickly realized that, man, I need to be more aware of my surroundings. Um, and not necessarily out of fear, but out of protecting kind of the others that are with me. And so that day I was refreshed in this idea that we le need to live in awareness um, and doing so can actually help us respond appropriately when things come up. And the truth is, is we actually live in a fairly distracted um, culture and, and we actually love it, right? Um, I see all the time now that school's back in, kids walking home from school, just their head into their phone, not looking around of what's happening in the street or anything like that. And I'd be willing to, to bet, like even people that are sitting in your group right now, how many of you actually go to the bathroom without your phone, right? We are all distracted <laughs> with this technology that we have in our world. And I think we're probably more distracted now than we ever have been. And because of this distraction, what I think is that we actually fall out of sync with what God is doing. Um, have you ever noticed that uh, not only us, but just even people in the Bible, we just ha we have a way of not being in sync with God's timing. I'll give you a few, right? Abraham, right? He was promised a kid in his old age, and then they waited for about 25 years, got a little antsy around the kind of the 13 to 15 year mark. He decided to do it his own way. He had his son Ishmael. And then we kind of see God's timing where he ultimately had, the, had Isaac later on, but created tension because Abraham was on a different time schedule than God. We see Moses leading the Israelites, right, in, into the promised land. And it probably should have been about a three to six month journey, yet they decided, you know what, we're not going to respond to God and where, where he is at at the time. And then it, it took actually 40 years to go what they should have only ha taken about six months. 
And so again, our timing is off. How about Mary when, when Mary in the New Testament is like, Jesus, go, go help them out with the problem they're having at the, the wedding where he's saying like, uh, where they ran out of wine and Jesus said, hey, my time's not yet. And then even when I think about in John chapter 11 at this, uh, Jesus' friend Lazarus is sick and uh, an urgent message com comes to Jesus and says, hey, your friend is sick. And he says, okay. And then he waits two more days. We have a way of just not being on the same time as God, being out of sync of where he's at and being distracted by kind of the circumstances or our own lives that put us off and really get us off track of what God is trying to do in that moment. God's timing is different. And if we're not intentional, we'll actually miss it and miss what he's doing. And so are you aware of what God is doing in this hour? Are you aware of what God is doing in you? Are you aware and have you aligned yourself with his pace lately? When it comes to the, the Great Commission in Matthew 20, but also a reminder in Acts chapter 1, are we aligning ourselves up with the mission of God to go into the world and make disciples? When you walk into the room, are you praying, God, would you make me sensitive and aware, alert to what you are doing here and now? But there's always things that get in the way, right? There's things like busyness, there's things like fear, complacency, apathy. But I want to challenge you, and I want to give you guys three things that I think that will kind of sensitize, tenderize our hearts uh, of being more aware of what God is doing in this hour. Okay? So the first one is this. is uh, Everyone's going to hate this one, but share your faith with the stranger as soon as possible. This is hard um, because I personally love when we can actually take the relationships we have and then slowly begin to disciple people into becoming Christians. But the truth is, is that a lot of times I think we use that as an excuse to not step out and ultimately fulfill the great commission that is on our lives. And so I want to encourage you that if you've never done this, even if you've done this, just to refresh yourself, go out and just find a stranger and share your testimony with them. And I know that some of you are probably shaking in your boots right now. It's, it's totally uncomfortable. But what it does is when we step out into that uncomfortable area, you know what it does? It tenderizes our hearts to God's timing and not ours. And so sh go share your faith. <laughs> go to the nearest park. Go to the grocery sh store. Ask if you could pray for somebody. And hey, can I take a moment, just, a moment and just share with you what God has done in my life? Okay? So share your faith with a uh, share your faith with a, a stranger as soon as possible. So that second thing, these are all hard, but fasting. Um, nobody likes to fast, but there's something special about it. Go an entire day without a meal, and because that is putting yourself in a way that reminds you that we're just not here on earth to fulfill natural needs, but we're more than that. We're spiritual people, and we need to be focused on spiritual things. And so we want spiritual food rather than physical food. And just as Jesus was tempted to eat in the desert, he says, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from God. So fasting tenderizes us to what is happening in the spiritual realm. And lastly is this, is go and serve a difficult person. Man, if that doesn't tenderize you to God's timing, I don't know what does. But when's the last time you went and you actually not just prayed for your enemy, but you blessed them? That you went out out of your way to do something nice for some, someone that has probably wronged you. Now, I know some of those relationships don't allow that. But there's some things that people have done to us or treated us a certain way that are kind of unsaid and just a little hurts in our heart. I would say go to those people and begin to serve them. See what you could do for them. Be aware of their needs um, because as you do, what you'll begin to find is that as you wash people's feet, so to speak, you'll begin to see like where they've walked and how they've walked. And so I want to encourage you to go serve someone. And so these are just three simple things that are going to tenderize us to be more aware of what God is doing in the world. One, share your faith with a stranger. Two, fast and get on the, 
uh, get our mindset on spiritual things. And lastly, go serve somebody that has done you wrong um, because that can tenderize you to what God is doing. Okay? In just a moment, you guys are actually going to be introduced to a reach temperature card. And this is so important because before we get to where we need to go, just like when we look at a map, we actually need to see where we're starting from. And so this is going to help you to, to really gauge where, where are you right now with reaching out to others. Um, and then we can then begin to build a map to where we need to go. All right. Hope that encouraged you guys. Blessings to you guys. See ya.